In this video we're looking at how to use the graphing calculator to conduct a chi-squared test for independence. Alright, so in this problem it says use the table below, which is from a study on heart disease and smoking, and a point zero zero five significance level to test if smoking and heart disease are related. Alright, so we have the table. Let's look at how the table is set up. It actually has heart disease, no heart disease, smoker, non-smoker, and then it has these totals, right? So the original data is not um, it's not these totals, right? It's these four cells represents the original data. So the totals are just summary information that helps us do the calculations by hand. We actually do not need these totals if we're going to use the graphing calculator, though. All we need is these four cells here, which correspond to the original counts from the study. Okay, so let's go ahead and show how this is done in our calculator. It's a little bit different, this procedure, but it's not too hard. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first set up a matrix in our calculator that contains these four cells of data. So we're going to press this matrix button here on our graphing calculator. Some of you might have this in a different location in your calculator, but either way you should see matrix somewhere. In the 83 it's a button right there. So we'll just press matrix and then we're going to arrow over to where it says edit. So arrow over to where it says edit. So I'm going to edit A, matrix A, and that's important because that's where the calculator wants this first matrix to be in. So I'm going to press 1 to bring up that, okay? Now when I get there, it gives me matrix A, and we're flashing on the basic dimensions of the matrix. It says 2 by 4 here. That means I have two rows and four columns of data. I don't want two rows and four columns because if you look at our table, it has two rows and two columns only, right? It's a 2 by 2 table then. So I need to type in 2 by 2. Just arrow over and press 2. And when you do that, what you see is that if I push the down arrow, I'm going to come into the screen here and you'll see that my matrix automatically turns into a 2 by 2. Now there's some data in there because I had some data in there earlier. So all I'm going to do is just type over that data. It's not a big deal. So I'll just type in 25 for that first position where I see my cursor. I hit enter and it moves over to this position here. So I'll type 10 in now. So I'll type 10, press enter. Then it comes down to this position. I'll type 14, enter, and then I type 51 in. 51 enter. Alright, so all that's in my calculator. The next procedure I need to use then is to press my stat key. So I'm going to press stat and I'm going to arrow over to where it says tests, right? I'm looking for the chi-squared test. So I'm going to push the up arrow because it's at the bottom sort of. So I'm going to push the up arrow and I'm going to scroll up to where I see in my calculator option C where it says chi-squared test. That may be named a different, it'll always say chi-squared test, but it may not be C. It could be D in some calculators and B. It just depends on what other procedures the calculator has. But it should say chi-squared test. Once you're in there, hit enter. Now it's a very simple layout here. They say observed and they have an A here. That's telling me matrix A is where I put my observed values. These are my observed values for my chi-squared two-way table here. So I've entered those into matrix A and it's telling me that the expected values that it'll do the calculations for will end up in matrix B. So it's going to put those calculations into matrix B. So it's going to do the work for matrix B. We don't have to do anything. We've entered the observed values into matrix A and the calculator will take care of the rest and put the expected values that it calculates into matrix B for us where we can go look at them. Alright, so go hit calculate now. When I hit calculate, what it's going to do is tell me my chi-squared test statistic for the problem. It's 23.8. So if I was doing this test now, I could go get the critical value, for example, by looking up this um, significance level and the degrees of freedom. I could go by the way, it tells me the degrees of freedom in my calculator. It says degrees of freedom 1. So if I went on to the chi-squared table, looked up 0 0.005 degrees of freedom 1, I would get my chi-squared critical value. And I could compare that to this um, chi-squared test statistic. Or I could look at the p-value it's calculated. This p-value is very small. It has e to the negative 6, the scientific notation that's basically saying that's got five zeros. So it's got a decimal point, it's got five zeros, and then it has the digits 107, right? So it's practically zero. The p-value is very small. It's much smaller than our significance level, so we would conclude that we reject the null hypothesis. Now, if you want to see your expected values, so we have the observed values here. Normally, we would fill in the expected values for each cell. We can actually go get those if we press the matrix key again. So press the matrix key. And then we're going to go over to where it says matrix 2 here. So I'm actually going to look at that. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to arrow over to where it says edit and take option 2 or matrix 2. And when I do that, I'll be able to see the expected values that the calculator calculated. So for the first cell, they expected the number to be about 13.65. 
For the second cell, it would have supposed to be 21.35. For the cell here, it's supposed to be 25.35. And here, it's supposed to be 39.65. So those are our expected values. All right, so that's everything. And basically from there, um, you have enough to complete the procedure by hand the rest of the way. So you can come up with your appropriate conclusion and word your conclusion after all that.